Hi there everybody, Bill Horscott again with another episode of The Radical Geek. The Radical Geek. Where I get to meet other geeks at Flock to Fedora. What's Flock to Fedora? Flock Fedora is a event held by Red Hat for the Fedora operating system, Fedora Linux. And I'm going to talk to a lot of these open sourcers who love Fedora, use it a lot, use it for development, talk to them and uh, have some fun. Hope you enjoy. All right, I've got Alex Beck and Derek Sarbio. Sarbo? Lascarbo. Lascarbo, thank you. With the Magic Center at RIT, and can you explain what the Magic Center is? Um, the Magic Center is kind of an area for all types of groups to collide and create projects. Um, currently it's a lot of game projects that are coming out of there, but they're hoping to expand and get more people from all of the different um, majors at RIT to come together and kind of create their own projects and have a space for that. Right. And uh, what have you been working on? Well, specifically, we're with the free and open source software uh, portion of Magic. So we're the first free and open source miner, I guess, as far as universities go in the United States. Um, so we do a lot of projects and we have programs involved with open source. Um, one example is um, we have a course uh, that works with the OLPCs. Um, and we do a lot of work with uh, making applications for them. Uh, one of our projects is actually, the, or the final project for one of our uh, programs is to make an educational game for the OLPC. So we've made games that teach kids uh, how to do angles, uh, like basic addition, things like that. Okay, and uh, so what kind of, uh, what, what things do you learn in order to actually be part of the Magic Center? What kind of uh, courses, coursework do you have, I should say? Um, well, it varies. Uh, I'm a game design major. Um, the Magic Center, uh, I'm actually involved in the Magic Center for co-op. Okay. I'm working with, uh, through the Magic Center with uh, UNICEF okay. for like a, a web portal that they want made. So the Magic Center is uh, basically a way to kind of get students more involved in open source uh, opportunities and things like that. Um, as far as coursework though, it's really available to, to all majors and anyone that's really interested. Okay. So, uh, what, anything you're working on currently that you want to talk about? Um, I'm working on a project called WoW Diabetes. Okay. It's an add-on for World of Warcraft that uh, introduces diabetes to the game and makes it so that you have to kind of learn what types of foods you can eat and uh, like how activity and stuff like that affects e your body. Uh -oh. Interesting. <laughs> and I'm working on a web portal for UNICEF. Um, basically, it's um, a job application uh, portal. So essentially you can go and log in and you can search through their list of jobs or volunteer opportunities and pick one and apply for it. Okay. So it's a way to kind of bridge the gap uh, for applying to UNICEF because it's kind of a painfully long process and okay. kind of make it easier to do so. Thank you. Alright, I have Belief Mo from Je with the Jaguar board. Can yes. you explain what the Jaguar board is? Okay, the Jaguar board is the industry first Intel based single board computer. Okay, yeah. so this is basically taking all the power of maybe a traditional laptop, mm -hmm. something that's about the size of an index card. Mm -hmm. Yes, it's, uh, you can take it as a mini PC, but it can support Windows, Linux, and Android. So it's okay. a multiple platform. Okay, and if, okay, and what, um, what kind of applications could I use something like this for? Uh, we developed this board mainly for uh, for people to like uh, doing some development platform, so they can easily to do some applications. Can do it on Windows space. They don't need any Linux uh, knowledge okay. to do the development. Okay, and. Um has, is this board out and available on the market right now? Uh, not yet. It's not officially released. 
At this moment, it's only on sample production when we are now distributing it to the open source community first, okay. so that they can double check with the software. Okay, and um, what is how, um, you know, instead of having a Raspberry Pi which uses an ARM processor, mm -hmm. it's actually an Intel processor yes. you have on that. Now, why did you choose to use an Intel processor? Uh, because we want the performance to be much too much better. Okay. Yeah. All right, and um, what? Well, let me see here. In the one of the things shows you is like what um basically you can take this card and what basically hook up a keyboard, mouse, monitor, yes, and you basically everything's run off a flat a S micro SD card, correct? Oh, uh, actually, it's a, it has the onboard flash. Oh, it has so actually, you don't need SD card to run the system. Okay, so it's, mm -hmm. okay, so it's all internal, like a, yes, see in a like a tablet or a uh, smartphone. Yes. So okay. Um, has have you anybody? At, within the company that you're with actually done any sort of little projects with it or anything like that that talked around played around with it or anything? Uh, not yet. Not yet? <laughs> okay. So like would this be something like say somebody could use this for like I don't know like a test screen kiosk mm -hmm. or even like say uh, well, I can think of a lot of things that actually Yeah do you can this. do a lot of things with and, this one. Um, is this uh, so what does this uh, on this board, it's just basically a, it's just a circuit board, of course, there's not like, there's no built-in Wi-Fi or Bluetooth or anything like uh, that. Actually, the Wi-Fi will be a modular, okay. so you can add modular in this board and then you can have the Wi-Fi function. Okay, so, yes. okay. so um, basically, what uh, other features does this board have in it? Actually, let's yeah, see yeah, what we got in one. here. Uh -huh. yes. oh. yeah. Okay, this one. <laughs> I got it, I got it. So basically what it is, is uh, you can add things like Okay, so it looks like here you have is a network, yeah, USB. Network. One thing I like about this is it has a power switch that yes, the Raspberry it has Pi the power doesn't have. So you yes. can turn it on and off. So. Mm -hmm. Well, okay. So, and then, like I said, I like it how it not just you can put on like a couple different platforms mm -hmm. for it, not just Windows, but, yes. or not just Linux, but yes. either of those. Yes. And you can um, put a Hold the full system. You don't need to do any modification on the system. Okay. Just install the system okay. with the ISO. All right. And uh, what else is there? We've got uh, HDMI. Mm -hmm. Yes, HDMI and the audio. And you have audio. Yes. And next, is this like a SD card slot or? A yeah, card SD card slot? slot. Yeah. Okay. So. All right, so you can have additional, okay, expand your storage, okay. Mm -hmm. And so what do you plan, uh, when do you think that this product will be out to the general public? Uh, maybe in two months. Maybe in two months? Yes. It might be in four months. Uh, <laughs> probably two months, probably <laughs> I think. Two months. <laughs> yeah. Okay, well, we will thank you, mm -hmm. and we'll look forward to the Jaguar Bard single board computer. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Pardon the interruption. I have some news which I believe you will find most interesting. Would you like to hear the latest in Marvel television, film, video games, and comic books? Or are you looking for some ideas on what to pick up on New Comic Book Day? Well, join Mike and Eric on Mighty Marvel Geeks every Saturday night on Sorcerer Radio and every Sunday on the Weeby Geeks Network for all things Marvel. There is a matter that requires your attention. Mighty Marvel Geeks. Assemble. All wrapped up here, sir. Will there be anything else? All right, I've got Major Hayden from Rackspace as a principal architect. I'm just going to ask the dumb question first. What do you do as a principal architect? <laughs> a little bit of everything. Uh, so my main focus, I would say, is on virtualization. So Zen, KVM, uh, containers. And then, of course, that includes the whole OpenStack ecosystem. So, you know, you've got Nova, Glance, all those pieces in there. Um, and a large part of it is dealing with the hardware, too. That's, uh, that's underneath all these hypervisor products and trying to figure out um, you know, what the best one is for our customers, uh, what's the best one for the virtualization software itself. And, okay. yeah. and can you just give me briefly what virtualization is? Yeah, so um, virtualization is a way of, hmm, this one's a tough one. But yeah, it's, it's basically a way to subdivide a server into multiple parts depending on uh, the reason that you're doing it. Some people do it for um, to save money, uh, so they can stack more things up on the same servers. Some people do it to have better efficiency, so they can save on power and some other things. So instead of having you know uh, 50 individual physical machines, maybe you can bring those down to about 10 running virtualization. 
And then with new technologies like containers, you can make that even more dense than it was before. You can take out a lot of that, uh, that duplicated stuff between virtual machines. Okay. So basically what you're saying is virtual machine is you have a computer, a server, and basically you're basically making a server with a server. Right, right. <laughs> And there's some great things about it too, like uh, you can provision them and deprovision them in a hurry. You can change their configuration in a hurry. So a traditional server where you say, hey, I want to add an uh, additional network to it. That means walking out to the data center, turning it off, putting in a network card, booting it back up, configuring the network card, making sure everything's good. Um, and that can be really frustrating because you also got to think about the networking components like the switch as well. Whereas with virtualization, you can do it on the fly. Um, and sometimes without even taking the virtual machine down. It's all done through software. Right. Okay. And then all the networking can be virtualized as well. Okay. And uh, how did you get started with uh, Fedora? Oh, man. Uh, I originally got my start with, uh, with Gentoo, which was pretty punishing because you have to compile everything yourself. Um, and then eventually discovered uh, like Red Hat 7, Red Hat 8 way back in the day. Um, and then finally when Fedora Core came out, it was like, wow, this is, this is easy to use. Um, and it was bleeding edge, but yet it was stable, which was, was really, at the time, there wasn't anybody that was doing those two things well, and I think that's that's really where uh, Fedora excels. All right, and uh, how did you lead up, now that you're a principal architect, uh, what, uh, how did that lead up to being in that position? Um, what did you do before being a principal architect? Um, so I started at the company as just entry-level support. So just uh, kind of the entry-level Linux guy, answering phone calls, helping customers with issues, sometimes trying to help them figure out how to do something that they wanted to do. Um, and then from there, I ended up being a, a, a manager a couple of times, uh, and then learned a little bit more about Linux, uh, worked with some people who knew a lot more than me, and I learned from them and wrote everything down that I could possibly write. Um, and then gradually just started learning a little bit more, getting a little bit more influential, and. Um, that's kind of how these things come along. So. All right, and uh, basically, can you tell me a little bit about what Rackspace does? Sure. Um, so I would say traditionally we're a hosting company, uh, but we do we offer a wide array of services for customers. So we've got traditional, um, you know, I'm a customer. I would like to have a server. I would like to have a switch. I would like to have this. So where you define everything. Um, but then we also have things where a customer can show up and say, hey, I want to I do cloud servers with you. Just give me an API key and I'll go in there and do it. Or uh, I want to have cloud servers and I want to have uh, dedicated servers and be able to use them at the same time and be able to put them on the same network where it looks like they're sitting right next to each other. Okay. Um, and we've got a lot of other, we've, we've grown over the years and we offer a lot of support around um, a lot of products. And the, the thing we stand for is fanatical support. So being able to... Um, talk to a customer not only about the issue that they're having at that time, but be able to say, hey, look, you know, um, you're kind of pinning yourself into a corner. Let's make some adjustments and, and try and open you up a little bit. Or here's a way you can change the way um, you manage your infrastructure. Um, so that way you can either save cost or it works better with the way your company is set up or it makes it easier for us to serve you. Um, so that's kind of the fanatical sport is, is doing everything we can uh, for the customer and their business. All right, and um, have you done any um, outside of work, anything else with the uh, Linux or open source software, or anything like that on your own? Um, quite a few different things. Um, I, uh, I write a blog that I contribute to pretty regularly. Oh, and, what's the name of the blog? Uh, Major.io. Um, and on the blog, it originally started as uh, I was learning things at Rackspace so fast and I couldn't keep up, so I was writing them down as fast as I possibly could. And then I realized I needed to put this in a place where I could, you know, when someone said, hey, how do you do this thing? And I said, well, I just learned how to do that thing from that person. Let me send you the link. And then I could, I could link it to them, they could learn it, and then they could go share it with other people. Okay. Um, and then on top of that, too, I run um, a bunch of strange websites, uh, mainly around iconhasip.com. And so the whole point is uh, you'll be able to get your, your public-facing IP address uh, from wherever you are without any advertisements or any annoying stuff like that. And it's kind of spread into some, some other services, too. Okay. Oh, cool. Well, thank you, Major. All right. Thanks.